Ready? She Giselle is ready. Do, 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 do. Okay, but let's see. Can we hear Giselle? Hey, everybody. Yay! You sound amazing. You look amazing. Uh, cheers. Oh. <sighs> cheers, everybody, to each their own. <laughs> Coffee, alcohol, water, pick your poison. <laughs> it's all about balance, baby. Oh, my gosh. Ron, I'm so glad that you are here because... Yeah, I have told Giselle this before, but but um, Ron's a member on the site with us, and he frequently, frequently refers to you, talks about you, has great respect and awe for you as a dancer and a teacher. So thanks for being here, Ron. Here she is. Yeah, Ron. And Ron has also helped me digitize a lot of VHS tapes and DVDs from my personal collection. So thank you, Ron, for helping me do that. We're halfway through. There's a, a great program called the Uni Converter, and I, I believe Ron has some more information on that too, but um, there are programs out there, and Ron, I definitely needed help, so I feel your pain, <laughs> Michael. I understand, but it's such a wonderful thing to do for the community, for the archives, for yourself, just to have it there. And yeah, it's just beautiful. So good job, Michael. Okay. All right. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> um, thanks very quickly. Horst, uh, Horst asked if he really thinks that we should, uh, if we think he should digitize his 1993 harangue. Absolutely. Yes. Because the VHS stuff, <laughs> as, as many of us know, that tape will, will wear out or it will break. And once it is, like you can't, uh, you can't fix that. So, no, you can't. Uh, so that it's, you know, digital is forever, I think was the slogan they went with. But um, it is good to have it in digital form. <laughs> well, Giselle, so um, when we were introducing you, we did say Giselle resides in New Orleans, and that's been one of the places where the modern Lindy Hop community associates you. But, but you're not there right now. Where, where are you from? And where are you right now? I'm actually Evita in San Diego, downtown, uh, San Diego, California, and I'm originally from San Diego. I uh, grew up dancing in Southern California in the late 90s, early 2000s, and, um, and danced a lot in Orange County, Los Angeles, um, right after the swing craze happened. So I was one of those kids in high school that watched the Gap commercial and listened to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. And I thought swing was so cool and different. And I wanted to be cool and different. I didn't want to go to the techno parties and trip out on acid when I was 14 or 15 years old. It just didn't interest me. I don't know. And, <laughs> and it's cool if that's your thing. It just didn't interest me at the time. And uh, I discovered swing music when I was in junior high, actually, like 12 or 13. And um, and I found an outlet for it when I was in high school during the swing craze. So um, I just jumped on it. And uh, at the time, though, it was uh, it was pretty popular because of those uh, commercials. So it was uh, it was more mainstream. And uh, me coming from a Latin American heritage. Uh, my dad's from Panama and my mom's Mexican. Uh, I grew up with salsa and merengue and a bunch of Latin music in the home. So swing music and jazz really resonated with me because of the instrumentation of the group of people getting together. So you hear like a horn and a trombone and these rhythms and these complex things happening over each other and it felt good. I was like, all right, well, what can be mine? I'm American, I'm Latina, but I'm American. I'm like, swing. That's it. That's my thing. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so I just got completely obsessed with it and it just really touched my heart. And here I am. I mean, it's just carried over. I've, I've never lost touch with it. Um, so I moved to New Orleans about 10 years ago and uh, New Orleans called to me. It has a special kind of spirit in that way. And um, actually, my friends called me too <laughs> from New Orleans. They're like <laughs> Chance Bushman and Amy Johnson. <laughs> yes. we're, we're riding bikes in the French Quarter. You have to come out here. You have to come visit. 
So um, I eventually made it out there and, uh, and it, it drew me in and hooked me in and, and I got lost in the bubble of New Orleans. Here I am 10 years later, uh, back in San Diego due to the pandemic. This is where uh, my family's from and, and where I feel supported and everything. So at the moment, um, but now I consider myself as having two homes, San Diego and New Orleans. So. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Well, in, I think it's safe to say that Los Angeles is super different from New Orleans as an environment, yes. as an energy, but but even the music that you would encounter and certainly the dancing would be, I would think is super different. Yes, absolutely. Um, when I first started dancing, this, is, this has come up in conversation a few times. Uh, there was almost like a rivalry of um, different styles. It was, you, you two are familiar with this modern Savoy and smooth style or LA style or Hollywood style, however you want to call it. Um, but the modern Savoy is what I grew up initially with in uh, San Diego. And so we didn't dress up vintage. You just dressed in your sweatpants and your t-shirts and you wore jazz shoes and you were very, um, uh, let's see, your posture was in this modern, technical, kind of uh, almost trained and dance kind of way. Um, and you you sat differently on your hips. You just kind of, you still, you were still over, you know, on the balls of your feet and you still had balance, but it's just a different style. It makes a little bit of hip hop in there too, which is always fun. Uh, so I started with that. I started with the modern Savoy. And then, um, and then, uh, when Camp Hollywood uh, happened in 1999, the very first one, all of a sudden we were getting all this information from LA. It's like, that's how San Diego works. It always finds out what's going on in LA and then it brings it down to San Diego. And then we find out, okay, this is the new coffee. This is the new ice cream. <laughs> this is a new vegan thing or whatever. <laughs> so this is a new, the new style of swing dance is a smooth style and everyone would dress vintage. And so that was the craze. And, um, and I took some workshops um, from uh, Peter Loggins and Lisa Ferguson. Um, they came down from LA and, and they taught us this new style. And before that, um, I had learned and, and took, taken, I took workshops with Joe Cisse, you know, Joe Cisse from New York, uh, who worked with Frankie Manning. And um, yeah, I took a, a workshop with her and Katrine, um, uh, who is part of the Rhythm Hot Shop. And um, <clears throat> that was my first Lindy Hop workshop was with those two. Yeah, Josie and yeah, Katrine. So um, that was pretty, that was pretty fun. I love your reaction, Evita. Thank you. I feel the oh, same God. way. It was like so cool to see them. <laughs> it's so, it is so, so cool. I mean, there are so many people maybe watching right now who don't know who those people are. And it's yeah. just, oh, I mean, and, just, um, yeah. Sorry, I could go on. No, no, it's great. Also, Bernard, Bernard, uh, Bernard from Long Beach. Uh, he taught Peter Loggins, and I took my second workshop with him. And it was yeah. So th these are these were my the people that influenced my dancing at the time. Um, uh, Lisa Conway, um, she her name is not as known, but she is uh, in New York now. But she pretty much set the foundation in San Diego and provided these avenues for people like me, where I was in junior high and high school, just a kid trying to find a different outlet that was healthy, that was something that uh, you could enjoy and, and be part of a community and be in another era and dress up and, and play make-believe and use your imagination, you know? So, um, and be into the art, which is so important. You know, you could do, uh, sports and you can be into other things as well. But at that time, it's like, okay, let me, let me get into the arts right now. Let me find this expression of dance that makes me feel so good. And swing music is that type of expression and freedom. But, um, anyway, so yeah, a lot of great names out there. Um, in particular though, uh, what influenced me was driving up to Orange County. My dad lives in Orange County. My mom lived in San Diego. Um, she lives here in San Diego and Orange County was the scene that was bumping at the time, like LA too, but Orange County started going and really taking off. Shaysha Marvin, he was one of the pioneers for me as well. I, I saw him in a picture 
in the newspaper at Disneyland. So I was like, what is he doing? That's the Lindy Hop that I've heard about. So um, because of Shasha Marvin, I'm doing Lindy Hop. I always tell him that. He laughs at me. <laughs> but he, he's the owner of a, Atomic Ballroom, for those of you that might not know. But um, he is the forefront of the, of the scene in Orange County. And um, so we used to all hang out at the wonderful Club Memories. <laughs> Memories. I was, yeah, that was the name of the club, Memories. Yep, and that was the name of the club, Memories. And this is where you would feel that sense of the, the Savoy Ballroom, where like that cat's corner feeling happened, where you have jams at one in the morning, uh, people experimenting with new moves, people laughing, trading off partners, trying new moves with each other, messing up, you know, not being perfect, being perfect, uh, showing off their new steps, all of that combined. And, um, and it was really just a party and a way to get together and, and hang out. It was more of a hangout. It really was more of a hangout and it had a beautiful floor and they were open at least four or five nights of the week. And you could go Lindy hopping there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, maybe Sunday. You couldn't, I can't remember exact, exactly the schedule, but, um, club memories that was huge. And a lot of folks from Los Angeles would go and we yeah. would all meet there. Where was Memories? That was in Orange County? In Whittier, uh-huh. Whittier, yeah. okay. And, mm -hmm. and, bef and before that, um, it was, ah, I can't remember exactly. Well, this is, this is also the days when- There are like two different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Like so Fullerton my, area, Fullerton area. Well, that's right, that's right. Michael and I lived in Los Angeles for a little while. That's where we met, actually. This is around 2003. And uh -huh. that was a long time ago too. And uh, 2003, okay. Yeah, I was there 2002, 2003, but we were way up in like the valley north of the Hollywood Hills. And so we were we were hanging out at Lindy Groove, which was in Pasadena. And then also, um, oh, yeah. I can't remember. Cool. All the, I can't remember all the names of like the, the place. Oh, the Derby. Holy the Derby, yeah. Holy Derby in Los Angeles. But what was what was interesting is when I hear you talk about memories and I hear you talk about, yeah, you could go dancing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This was the era in, I guess, the early 2000s, late 90s that um, that was like the big pop culture thing. And so they had movies and they had like, you know, pop bands that were really embracing and enjoying swing. Um, so multiple, multiple clubs, like all over the region were saying, yeah, we can make money off of this. Like, you know, bring in the kids, let them dance. Yeah. So true. <laughs> and, and it was before the salsa craze. So it was like this huge yeah. craze of, of swing. And then that like eventually dissipated and then salsa uh, came out from that. And a lot of people just transitioned to that or they did both or whatever, but I stayed in swing and then, and now now, oh my God, swing is huge worldwide. It's yeah. amazing for me personally to see that. So it's it's really such a beautiful thing to watch it evolve over time. But um, but yeah, I mean all of all of those LA cats that uh that dance all that we call old school LA, um, they all influenced me. Uh, Minvo, Karina Acosta, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, so I, I have to interject. Hollywood crew, everybody, everybody. I mean, I just love them. They're like family, and and they they're they're people that I watched, and I wanted to to learn how to dance like that. And I thought it was so cool that they were also friends, hanging out, and it just has such a nice vibe. And even though uh, LA is slightly competitive, and it's just its own right because there's a there's just a lot going on there, and a lot of people want to do different things, and and uh, and, and that's fine and everything. Uh, but we took that competition and we made it into this fun, more uh, community-based thing. So that's kind of kind of how I see Camp Hollywood too. It's like a fun competition. So, um, but yeah, there's uh, there's something for everybody, and and that's okay to be competitive as well. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Th thank you for mentioning that. Camp Hollywood just happened, wasn't it? Yeah, just it just happened. happened virtually. So Hillary, first virtual Camp Hollywood major swing dance competition. She's setting the foundation for other ones to come this year. Eilie C's next. So I'm sure Eilie C is watching and taking mm -hmm. notes. 
and Hillary did a wonderful job. So I really do congratulate her for that. Absolutely. And the whole crew and the whole crew. It yeah. really brought people together. And uh, yeah, before the competition, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> it's not even live. <laughs> I'm like, oh my, I entered a division. I'm like kind of nervous. I'm in my house, like in my PJs. <laughs> but it still created a vibe of like getting together and everyone there watching together. But but yeah. but tell tell us about this because since it's one of the first competitions that happens uh, only Certainly. online, yeah. you entered. But then how? Yeah, tell tell us about that. How did that work for you? What did you do? Yeah, so I entered two divisions. Um, interestingly enough, uh, one of the divisions, classic division, I entered that with a partner, Leo Depoy. He. Uh, he was living in New Orleans. He ended up here in San Diego. So uh, a few of us, a handful of us have ended up here in San Diego from New Orleans. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so it was really fun to dance with him. He's uh, one of my new dance partners right now. So he's here in San Diego. We worked together. We put a little classic thing together. That was fun. We went to a dance floor over um, close in a restaurant uh, close to the beach in Pacific Beach. And uh, of course, it's closed. It's just a friend's restaurant. So we had this beautiful floor. Um, so it was nice to have access there. So we did one competition there where we, um, I know it's so nice to dance on, when we stepped on that floor, it was butter. We were like, oh my God, I forgot what this felt like to step Space. on a floor, on a real yeah. dance floor and slide. <laughs> yeah, space, man. I, I always joke about it with, with the folks here in New York. It's like space is truly the final <laughs> frontier, the final yes. obstacle uh, for, for dancing. I it's know. The final, uh, so Final frontier is so true. So, uh, so we did open classic, and um, and it's kind of cool because uh, Leo is one of the newer dancers. So for me, it was nice to bring in one of the newer dancers so everyone could get to know him. Um, he's only twenty, and you know I've been doing this twenty years, and it was his first dance competition, and so I'm honored. <laughs> Sorry, Leo, I'm only giving you a shout out. I'm honored to have been able to dance with him in that. And uh, and for me, it's all about like keeping the new generations of dancers going and to remind them what the dance is all about. So I'm glad that he chose me as well. Um, so that happened. Also, I entered the first ever solo showcase division at Camp Hollywood. Uh, Hillary and I spoke and I said, hey, I'd, I'd like to do a solo dance is there a division for that she said you know what a lot of folks have been asking me about this and uh, might as well start a new division let's do solo showcase so she did solo showcase and just a handful of people on um, entered and um it's just you by yourself doing whatever you want your routine to whatever song you choose um so i used it as a creative outlet to um to express an idea i had just about a week before i was sipping some espresso because I'm definitely addicted to espresso. <laughs> Have my little shot every morning, carry a little cup with me on the side. <laughs> ready, um, to <clears throat> ready to go. And uh, so I was listening to Pandora and Lulu's Back in Town came on and it was a version I had never heard before. Like, what is this version? It's so cool. It's Thelonious Monk's version from 1964 of Lulu's Back in Town. I, I'm always listening to Fats Waller, which is so awesome, and other other versions. But it's just kind of, it was so different and interesting and complex that it caught my attention right away. Like Thelonious Monk, he was one of those pioneers of jazz in that way. He was a piano player in the 1960s, and earlier than that in the, in the bebop era. Um, but he, he was definitely in the forefront of, of creating in a way that was, outside of the box completely that not everyone would accept or understand but it didn't matter to him because he he felt good about what he was doing because he was truly being artistic he is just being himself an artist yes that's right Thelonious Monk Lulu's back in town so the song in 1964 of course was eight minutes long <laughs> or it's it's nine minutes I can't remember so I'm like, yeah, 1960s is more of a concert. It's not really meant for dancing. Plus, in the 20s and 30s, you had the record where you could only uh, record for three minutes at a time when you're making physical records. So um, that's why these songs are three minutes. So 
we'd probably all be in better shape, you know, with our Lindy Hop if we started dancing the songs that are six, eight minutes, nine minutes long. No, we're all in, we're all in great shape because we're dancing. Just keep moving, people. Whatever you do. That's right. But um. <laughs> so, 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 you, so you must. So did you edit the song down for the competition, or did you do all? So, I know my initial idea was like, okay, I'm highly influenced by Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington had a concert series where he had like part A, part B, part C. And I said, why don't I split this up into parts? Let's just divide into parts. So I decided to put the first three minutes as a routine of the solo showcase. And it's just piano and Thelonious Monk. The second part of the song, the band kicks in and it's really, you know, this other kind of vibe. So that's, that's going to come maybe in six months, maybe for ILHC. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna come later. <laughs> um, it'll tell a story. Uh, so, anyways, uh, yeah, the first three minutes is just Thelonious Monk and him being crazy on the piano and all these weird rhythms and syncopations and and different melodic interpretations of the song. Um, and I decided to even from that part to split it into a smaller part and have it be in this format where it's like organized as the first chorus is just the melody. The second chorus is just the backbeat or the rhythm or the left hand of the piano. And then the third chorus is the two A's, even smaller. The two A's are just the melody. And then the B is the rhythm. And then the back to the A is the melody. And then reverse that as you finish the second, the last chorus. And that kind of thing where um, it's just, that's what made sense to my brain. And then I could really get into the uh, details of each part of the song and like what he was doing on the piano. And uh, some parts are very detailed because it's the melody and some parts are more generic because it's just the rhythm and you can understand it a little bit more. But to me, that was very artistically satisfying. And one of the hardest pieces that I personally put together and I've choreographed a lot of different routines um, so I, I enjoyed the process and I really do owe it to, um, that avenue and that, that platform of that virtual competition through Camp Hollywood. So yeah, that was nice. absolutely. That sounds amazing. Just like, <laughs> I imagine that this new format where people are allowed time to really build something and then film it for themselves and edit as they want will spark a lot more hopefully new perspectives and new new thoughts about the music. Is this, um, should I try to show a little bit or share a little bit of it? Sure. Uh, we'll see if this works. It's gonna have to be, I think, a screen share for me. Okay. Uh, can I make this happen? Where can I, I add one more thing that I almost forgot that is really <laughs> an interesting thing? Uh, Thelonious Monk was known for wearing crazy hats. So I decided to wear an interesting hat, a mariachi hat, so a very large Mexican style hat. <laughs> I just grabbed it from my mom's closet. I said, this will do just fine. And so I put one on. Do you have one, Evita? <laughs> this is not a mariachi hat. This is more of a it's, it's great. It's great. This is a sombrero, but yes. Uh, that's something that Thelonious Monk would have worn. Absolutely. So you might see that in the video. You will. All right. Let me let me see if I can share this. Let's see if this will work. Okay. Fingers, fingers crossed, because I think you just sent it to me. Here we go. And uh, so, by Thelonious Monk, 1964, his version of Lulu's Back in Town, dance choreography by Giuseppe <laughs> 2020, part one. Oh, you're beautiful. I had to, des I had to describe it. <laughs> wow. Evita, I don't know if you're sharing it, but I can't see anything. I'm not sure. I if... can't see it either. Oh, no. Um, it says that I'm sharing. Wow, Giselle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, with that slidey floor. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, you can put a link. I'm happy with that too. Oh, incredible. Okay, well, I tried. I tried. Yeah, um, no worries. Let me, though, I'm going to take the link, copy, and I'm going to go back to, here we go. Oh, yeah, we can't see it. Thank you, Petunia, for letting me know. 
damn, I tried. But here is the link. And share it. Oh, cool. Thank you. Share it in the, in the, oh, okay. You can do it that way as well. I, can, I wanted, I wanted to answer Horace's question, uh, which times was Monica voice style dance? Uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Mm. Um, I, I believe, in my opinion, Dave, David Delmo was one of the uh, people to dance that kind of style. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sending that link. So David Delmo, if you look him up, D-E-L-M-O. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, would you agree, Michael? Yeah, he's great. Uh, yeah, David Delmo. Uh, D A L M O and his partner Osa, uh, not not to be confused with uh, Osa and uh, Daniel, but yeah, they like their their stuff is great, and uh, he's come back a little bit as well. So he's teaching and performing, and oh, great! I mean, he's still he's still killing it. Nice. A lot of folks from San Diego went and worked with him, and then came back here and shared a lot of that info. So that yeah. was pretty neat. Yeah, that's fabulous. So cool. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, um, I um I wanted to share another video, but now <laughs> I'm super skeptical about it yeah. working. Um, there's this really beautiful video from 2011, Lindy Focus, and this is Giselle dancing with Nathan Bew and me and Michael dancing. Um, do you, can you guys talk a little bit about it while I try to see if I can get the share screen to happen correctly? Yeah, absolutely. It was the song. Yeah, go. The song was Blue Skies um, by Count Basie and his orchestra. I think it was a live version. But um, as far as the song, I just remember that I, it was one of the songs that really resonated with me. Um, but it, and it was really a lovely experience to work with you two and and to create something together. But uh, but Michael is, has a little bit more info on what what's going on in the choreography. Do I? I? Actually, I was going to say, I don't. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, I just figured out how to successfully share this. Right. So I'm going to do that, and then, um, right. then we can talk about it afterwards. Right. Now, I feel like you and Nathan worked on stuff like that. Oh, yay! Is that and, it? Yes, and then minimize us, Evita. Minimize us. I'm minimizing me. I, oops. No. So you maximized you. Oh. Nice to tell. Technology. Oh. No, I'm <laughs> There we go. <laughs> there we so go. much fun, so you guys. Happen. Okay, and then I gotta press play somehow, right? You think, Pint? Yes, you, you do. Let's uh, let's see if I can press play. This is very exciting. Oh, fingers crossed. It's Michael and Abita. Nathan and Giselle. Send a link, Joshua. Okay, yeah. 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 We'll send wow. a link, Joshua. Okay. Um, Evita, you can share the link now, but I would recommend that we just share the link in the replay oh. when we upload it. That would probably be the best. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Bummer. Yeah. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Joshua, nice to see you on here. What are you doing? He said, watching <laughs> videos is what I'm trying to do. 
I guess I guess for a couple of reasons, it's good to know that sharing video like that is tough. Oh, he says I miss you all, but I especially I G because I haven't seen you in ages. I miss you too. We hung out together in New Orleans. Oh, we had so many wonderful dances and times together. Uh, it's just um, oh, it's a real treat to be able to have had that time with you, Joshua, while you were there in New Orleans. So hugs, hugs, hugs. I feel like I'm one of those people <laughs> that I kind of, I just, I have spent a certain amount of time with so many different people and I've been around for so long that uh, if you talk to the people that are like, that everyone else knows, they all know me, but not everybody else might know who I am. <laughs> and and I'm perfectly fine with that. It's just what's happening naturally. But I, I also like to share my story. So I'm glad to be on here uh, sharing my story with you guys. Um, and, and that's the thing with dance is like, if you think about it more of a journey instead of a, you know, they say it's like not a destination, right? It's a journey and it is the journey, it's true. Um, I was just watching some videos last night. I watched that video from Lindy Focus and it's so beautiful. And, and I was watching some other videos too and I started to reflect on my own dancing. And a lot of us can watch videos of ourselves and say, oh, well, you know, that looked weird and that wasn't that. And instead I decided to uh, appreciate all of the intricacies of these videos from the past and, and my journey in dance. And then I thought, oh, wow, this is so cool. And, and I actually entertained myself and, and I appreciated the, the parts where I'm improvising and, and all the little details of things that maybe were missed by my partner, maybe were missed by the crowd or the audience. But I watched that video five years later and I see it and I'm so satisfied and so happy with myself. So, you you know, if you're watching this and you're a dancer and, and you watch videos of yourself, um, you know, just go easy. It's a journey and, and it's really important to value every step of the way and um, and to find the perfection and imperfection and to know that um, that's who you are. That's like you're a human being. And sometimes you see the beauty in like something that looks awkward and something that is expressed differently. So just find that kind of beauty within yourself um, and, and appreciate who you are um, as an individual in your journey. Um, I've always, uh, you know, stressed that in, in, in my classes and, and when talking to people, it's just about being an individual and, um, and taking bits and pieces. Like if you have something you wanna work on, that's great, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and you'll go through phases where you're like really care about certain things and you'll go through phases where you don't care so much about those little things and you just want to ride the, that wave of dance and that's, that's great and do that. Um, I, I would say that it, it is a journey and you're going to see people along the way that influence you and that you want to take from and uh, you're going to add to it. Um, but I, I just caution you, <laughs> if you just regurgitate everything, um, you're not doing the work. Um, and the work doesn't have to be working like, ah, oh, doing the work. It can be work in the sense that you're thinking for yourself and that you're adding to the art form because you're important to the art form. Every single person that dances, you don't have to win this competition. You don't have to be the most famous person. Uh, and you're still important. And, and I always want people to know that, that you're always important no matter what. Uh, it's your journey. And as teachers, as, as people in the community, we're there to support you through that. So, you know, um, some people want to be an important person and you have that goal and, and that's okay. And you go through that journey and that's, that's beautiful too. And that's respectful. But there are a lot of other people that um, maybe don't fit into that top tier of five, 10 dancers worldwide to, you know, and you don't look that way. And maybe your body isn't shaped that way. Maybe your, your philosophy is slightly different. And I encourage you yet you, um, you know, that you have value, you have a place and, uh, and, you, and we're all in it together. So there's so much more I could say about that, but that's really what I want to say. <laughs> that, uh, that's, where were you the other day when I was watching the video? Because I was like, what the hell am I doing? 
<laughs> like I said, you go through phases. Yeah. Some yeah. days it's okay. There's nothing wrong with being critical of yourself. That's how you learn and grow and mature and build upon it. But you know, uh, um, if you have that tendency, then then go in the opposite direction. If you have the other tendency, then do the opposite thing, right? So it just depends where you're at. Whatever um, you do, do that. Do the other thing. Yeah, do the other thing to balance. <laughs> Well, I, Giselle, that was so beautiful. I'm glad that this will be viewed again and again by people on Facebook and on YouTube because what you just said there is is absolute comfort and wisdom and gold and needs to be said and heard more often. Um, and, and this particular performance, I remember it being a big deal for me because I loved working with this collection of people. The four of us was really exciting. Um, you in particular, Giselle, really, you inspired me, like I said earlier in the introduction, because I really saw in you this, this individual character and strength and this constant curiosity of what am I doing right now and what's going on and no, how do I really think about this? Like you weren't trying to copy anybody. You were really working internally. And I thought that was so beautiful and, and fascinating. And this particular routine, which if anybody gets a chance to watch it, you'll definitely see that there are some moments that are super tightly choreographed, like, oh my gosh, they were all there at that beat. But then there's a lot of moments, in fact, at least half of the routine is soft, improvised, like, I'll just meet you on the beginning of the phrase, or do whatever you want, but this is like the goal. We just need to get from point A to point B. And you decide how you get there. And at this time in 2011, for me, that was crazy because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, nah, -uh. there's social dancing, which is where you improvise and you're in the moment and you don't know what's gonna happen. And then there's performance where you are practiced and you choreograph it and everything like is, you know what's gonna come next. And this was like really a pivotal moment where the two collided for me. And it was really exciting because I felt supported by all of you and I felt uh, excited by all of you. And I, I just, I, I want that, that, that has been a continuing thread or a continuing path. Like that door opened for me at that moment. And I was like, okay, there's more to this. How does this work? Um, yeah, it's very, it's important. I'm so happy to hear that. That's amazing and so beautiful. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first time, so this was mostly a, a brainchild idea of Nathan View. And the four of us actually were teaching together at Catalina. I guess it was that year. It was that year. Mm -hmm. So it would have been, I don't know, the spring. It I must have been. I think it was the month prior, I think. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah, there wasn't okay, that. It was December. Yeah, it was cold and it was cold in Catalina. Yeah, okay. November, so, November. Yeah. So we were so we were teaching the four of us there in Catalina, and it was one of the last Catalinas I think that Joel Plies uh, had. And um, anyways, we we decided at the last minute to put this together, and part of the desire to improvise so much of the material was it was such a short amount of time to put the performance together. Um, and so, yeah, and then because we were all at Lindy Focus, we're like, well, let's do it. Let's yes. do it. Yes, yes, that's so great. And I'm glad we did that. Um, and yeah, you're right. I guess I never thought about that. There's some people think that uh, you're supposed to just do certain routines for in choreography for this specific thing and you can't leave, you know, breathing space for, for other things, but in reality, you can mix it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Was that the same and, that you and Nathan mm -hmm. did Shadrach? Was that the same? Was it the same what? Was that the same year that you got, like, wasn't that the same time you guys were working on a different routine? Shadrach one? Yeah. That was a few years later, actually. How was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have another routine uh, that we worked on uh, called the Sh um, to a song. I can remember the whole name, but Shadrach is what we call it. Yeah. But, um, in Catalina, that's where we saw Lance Benishek. Yeah, right. uh, Lance, Giselle, will you tell 
us about Lance Beneshek and actually how do you spell his last name so I can put his name in the in the notes for people. I have to make sure that I get it right to be honest. Sure. Um, While well, you ladies look, I'm gonna say B A N I S H E K. Yeah. Yes, it's an E K. Ben Ishek, Lance Banishek. I think so. I'm just I'm making up a guess. I'm stalling for time while you ladies do your keyboard thing. Nishek, yeah, it's Ben Nishek. So B A N I. Yeah. B E N I S H E K. I'm sorry, B E N I F. What are we doing here? H E K. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, it's important. I, I, I need people to know about Lance. Giselle, will you tell us a little bit? Like, who is Lance Beneshek? Yes. Um, he was a historian um, based out of, uh, I believe it was uh, um, Minneapolis, um, Minnesota. Uh, and he was a historian of uh, dance, of American vernacular jazz dances and uh, um, dances from the 1900s through the 1950s. Uh, so he worked with Chester Whitmore. Um, he would find these videos of the dance called the Texas Tommy from the 1900s that were done in San Francisco um and he would show them in his classes and talk about how the texas tommy evolved to uh what we know as swing and how it took the steps there to the breakaway and to lindy hop um and he also had a library of moves uh, because he went and spoke with these people that did them in the day uh the, the big apple so call dances so i remember jojo jackson went to Minneapolis and hung out in Minneapolis and and spent time with him too uh, so she could write down as many steps that she could with Lance of the Big Apple call dances. So um, you have like the camel walk, right? Which is something that people know, but maybe there's like the alligator crawl. That's a, something that isn't as known. Um, so there are various styles of, um, uh, I would say vernacular jazz or uh, solo jazz now um, that were done back in the day. So he was more of a um, historian uh, and a collector of of those uh, of that era. And he uh, shared that information in all his classes. He traveled all around the world. He danced himself. He was a great dancer. There are performances of him as well. Um, Amy Johnson and Mike Faltasak and probably Peter Strom, who are from Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, could say more about him as well, maybe as a person, maybe they spent more time with him. For some reason, um, we had this nice connection, Lance and I, um, every once in a while, I would hear from him, he would send me a text or, get, or, or call me. Um, I, I started this uh, women in jazz music and dance movement called Girl Jam in 2005. Um, that was before then, I've ta been talking about this, um, before then, mostly just couples were hired, um, and it was usually the lead whose name was known, it was, it was just whatever dancer as the lead, as the main person and partner, and so rarely the follow's name was mentioned or I mean, it was mentioned, but never, no one really cared. <laughs> okay, they might have, but it, um, it was just more of a lead based, yeah, Girls Dance 2005, more of a lead based um, way of hiring instructors. So uh, I wanted to create something that um, honored women in the swing dance community and where women um, or follows uh, could have a voice. And so I created the Girl Dance. And um, that started in 2005, and there have been 20 or so. Girl dance worldwide. There's one in London, uh, in Melbourne, um, all over the place. There's going to be one in a few weeks um, in Argentina, virtual. <laughs> Argentina, girl dance. Wow. September 26th. September 26th. So. Oh my God! Um, if anybody out there in the comments has a link uh, to help us with Girl Jam Argentina, put yeah. it in there. Let us know. Yeah. So. Um, you can follow, there's a, a Girl Jam on Facebook, um, Girl Jam Swings on Facebook. Um, so that's 
that's me on there. Anyway, so in 2006, um, thank you. Um, I decided to host it in LA and I wanted the Girl Jam to have a variety of different things. Uh, yes, honor women in different generations, uh, but also different dance styles. So I had Sarah Reich, who is a very well-known tap dancer nowadays. She was a teenager at the time. She taught tap. Uh, Peppa taught hip hop, because I believe hip hop and tap and all those kinds of rhythmic dances are all related to Lindy Hop. Uh, and they're, the roots of uh, this kind of style um, uh, are in the foundation of African dances and then swing and tap and uh, later hip hop. So I wanted to include that. Um, and I hired Jenny Lagon, uh, who, who is a famous uh, tap dancer and elder of the scene. Um, you can find many, many videos of her. Um, and uh, I never got a chance to hire Norma, unfortunately, but, uh, but I, I, I did try to get some folks um, over to the girl jams that uh, were the elders. So uh, because I had all those kinds of, of people and Chester Whitmore as well, he was working, actually he was working on Norma Miller's documentary. Cause he's like, he pulled me outside, he's like, gee, gee, we're working on this documentary, Queen of Swing. You gotta check this out. And he's like telling the story and the way Chester did it. He's like, he's like, this it was a great documentary. She has all these things going on. She worked with all these people. So, um, anyways, Lance wanted to be part of it. So he called me. He said, "I'm flying to Los Angeles. I want to be part of your project. I want to go and hang out and see Jenny Lagon and see Chester and everything." So he came out. And that was really special for me because I, I, I really respected him and I still respect him. And, um, and he's such an amazing uh, force in the swing community. So I got to connect with him there. And then I saw him in Catalina with you guys. Um, and just a year ago, um, actually last fall, not even a year ago, uh, 2019, September, he messaged me and he messaged me a picture of Chester and I doing the over the back we were just practicing and messing around and we did the over the back. He took a picture and he said, remember this? And, and so he, he said, Hey, let's talk on the phone. And I said, okay. We started chatting on the phone. He said, you know what? My health is really poor. I don't feel like I'm going to be here much longer. I really just want to connect and, and talk about dance and, and, and just know that I, I am an important part, you know, of, of history and, and, and what my purpose is. And I said, yeah, sure, Lance, let's, let's, let's talk. And so, um, so we talked for a little while, uh, just a few times. Um, the idea was for me to document a lot of the, his knowledge and, and, uh, and write it down. Unfortunately, he, he passed before we got to finish all of it. Um, I just remember him um, talking about the Big Apple, talking about uh, people that he interviewed talking about Norma and um, I think uh, some of Norma's siblings. Um, he also spoke to me about just dancing with me and saying, hey, you know, I remember us dancing together and that was really special. And I just felt like we had this groove and and it didn't matter that it was, it, it felt personal because he was talking about me and I, and I was very honored, but it was more that he was reminiscing his dances with other people and other follows. And I could tell he was just trying to feel that same sensation of connecting with a partner and connecting in that kind of way where you're social dancing. And so we would talk about our dances together. And he'd say, oh, that was just so, I remember that. Oh, no, yes, that was so good. And that made him feel comforted. I, I could tell that made him feel comforted of, of what he has done, even though he wasn't able to dance because of um, the disease he suffered from. It didn't allow him to to uh to dance at the time so um when i heard of his passing i it was very sad um but uh he he knew he knew he was gonna he didn't have much longer and i i just feel absolutely honored to have connected with him during that time lance benishik so that's a that's a name definitely look him up there's some dances um that he recorded of, of himself with his partner at the time um but um but i just want lance to know that uh, he didn't, he didn't have to worry about losing that information because all of that information that he's given over, he has given over his lifetime is out there. 
and it's been spreading this way and spreading that way. And people in Catalina over here and the people elsewhere in LA over here and with me and with others. So, um, you know, and that's what happens in, in, uh, in your lifespan. You, you give out to society, you give out to people and you think you might not have an effect or people don't remember, but they do. And, and maybe it's not in this larger sense. Maybe it is. Um, but you know, it's about the people you touch along the way that really matters. And, you guys are excellent examples of that because you both touched so many people along the way. And I think that is so important right now because we're in a pandemic and what we do as artists is the most valuable thing. And in the Renaissance era, we would have been the top of a hierarchy of society um, as dancers, dance instructors, movers, artists, musicians, poets, all of you out there that do any kind of artistic expression, what you do is so vital to humanity, not just now, to humanity, because you have all these corporations, all these other things happening and everything moving so fast, pandemic, blah, 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 fire, blah, blah, yeah, earthquake, I have no idea, I don't care. <laughs> Where's my live stream? <laughs> all these things moving so fast, but, what is going to keep us together as the core essence of what we are as human beings? The art, the art. And it's so beautiful. And we are doctors of the art, doctors of dance, doctors of music, doctors of whatever you want. Because if you touch someone's soul, if you touch someone's heart, you're healing them. You're using those methods to heal. And modern medicine, I've been reading up on, mod, on um, the history of naturopathic medicine recently. Modern med medicine just started uh, maybe 200 years ago. But think about all the centuries before that, all the time lapse of the humanity before that, all of it, all of it, so long. <laughs> and music, dance, poetry, everything that has to do with the arts has always kept us, history has always kept us going. So we have to keep going. And and as as humans, we need to uh, to realize that, that, that value. And as artists, what, we need to realize that value. Um, and you can connect uh, with people online. You can connect uh, with your own artistic expression, uh, dancing in your house, singing at home, um, anything that calls to you. If you're tapping into what's in here, you're tapping into what's out there, and then you're tapping into everybody else. So that's really how I see it. Um, and, and you're all doing the, the work internally in that way. So if anything, though, you're right. This pandemic uh, leads us to, uh, to, to work inwards a little bit more, but, uh, and then share it, share it again. So, and then it just becomes a cycle. This cycle. Well, that that is the most perfect, <laughs> um, most perfect segue to just letting people know how they can stay in contact with you. Just go to Giselle's website, which is drqueen.com. <laughs> like she will heal you, or she will inspire you. Um, your journey and your, your experiences and your story, Giselle, is so beautiful and it's so rich and and diverse and you, wow, I I don't know what to say. I'm I'm very emotional right now. Yeah. I'm so happy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for uh, offering some words of encouragement as well. I know people are, are definitely struggling to figure out how to make sense of themselves and the world around them right now. It's really hard. So it's yeah. nice have some some centering words from you just Absolutely. to remind us what what is and, and may not be important yeah mm -hmm. and and also if you guys want to hear Giselle talk preach dance some more which I know you all do she's also teaching this Friday uh, the Friday night dance hall which I believe you've all and I I don't remember what they're called something swing dance but um that's happening this Friday, September 11th at 8.30. Giselle will be teaching, and uh, you can check that out uh, if, you, if you Google or if you put into Facebook Friday Night Dance Hall. But another opportunity to spend some time with this amazing woman, Giselle Anguizola, thank you so, so much. You oh, thank you. 
incredible, incredible words of wisdom. I just want to say thank you to you, Evita, and to you, Michael, for having me on here. And, and also for leading the way in the online uh, connections here with the rest of the world and swing dance. Uh, you guys have been doing this platform for many, many years now already. So how did you know? <laughs> it's almost like you knew. <laughs> we, we know nothing. We know nothing. <laughs> but oh my gosh, what you're doing for, for everybody because you already set this up before and you, and you, um, you realize that this would be important. Uh, you know, to switch to online for many, several reasons, but now people are really benefiting from it even more so. So um, I definitely congratulate you two for doing that. And, and now it's like you're connecting instructors who are used to traveling around the world and, and uh, uh, every other weekend somewhere, you're, you're giving them a sense of purpose as well. So I think that's really special. Thank you, Giselle. Thanks for, thanks for being yeah. here. All right. Well, it, it, incredible. But be well. I'll be in touch with you very soon for more for more stuff that we're going to be working on. And um, love you. Thank you so much for being with oh, us. I love you guys too. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh my gosh. See. Oh my gosh. I like. I'm speechless right now. Like, I, like my soul and my heart just needs to drink in what she said. Well, then, I feel like we should uh, we should uh, not part ways because of anything negative. But if you need some time, take some time. Maybe we all do. It'd be nice to get off the screen for a bit. I know a lot of us have been screen weary as well. So um, that was oh, great. That One was minute. amazing. I I needed to hear that today. I needed to hear that. And I hope everybody watching enjoyed and uh, benefited from it as well. Yeah. Um, thanks everybody for hanging out with us today. Yeah. And if you missed this or you want to watch the whole thing, you can always go back and see it on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebooks. On the Facebook. All the books. And we'll share those links as well to the, to the, I know you shared them in the chats, but it would be nice if uh, on that YouTube replay, we'll just reshare the links so we can, Watch uh, her her performance from Camp Hollywood this year, as well as the Lindy Focus video. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> good evening and good night. Vita, I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Bye.